Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Albright here. Uh, today I'm joined by two really special guests. We have Mary Maxman and Stefan Hillerbrand of the Artistic Duo. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Welcome. Thanks. Hey, thank you so much. <laughs> So, um, you guys have a really interesting art practice out of your own home, and you're based in Texas, is that correct? Yeah, That's in right. Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Excellent. And you're often joined by your children in your own work, right? So this is kind of a family affair at times. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I want to just jump in and have you two start speaking about your work. Now, from what I understand, your work incorporates a little bit of everything. You've got photography, you've sculpture, uh, performance art, and you've described your work as um, a type of suburban flexus. So, tell me a little bit more. What is suburban flexus, and what are some of the themes that you explore in your work? Oh, sure. sure. You want me to start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that our uh, that we're from Houston, Texas, and that our practice is based in our home. And we have a, a w lovely story that we always tell everybody when they ask about it. We're not originally from Texas or from Houston. Uh, we met in graduate school, uh, spent a lot of time up in New York City, and then we moved to Houston. And we had uh, two children uh, at that time, very young. Um, how old? three and one? No, and Emmett was just born and Maddie was three. Three, so just a, a newborn and a three-year-old. And we had rented a studio, like all, you know, artists, we had a, we have a home and our apartment or, you know, a place where we, we fall asleep. And then we had our studio uh, and we had hired a babysitter to take care of the kids. And we were going out to the, the studio and we had done this for a couple weeks. And one day when we were in the studio looking at those white walls, you know, surrounding us, we were like, this is really strange. And it happened, we both look kind of, uh, the story sounds better if we said we're both looking at each other, but we had this kind of aha moment where we said, why are we kind of getting in our car and, and driving off and going to, you know, to a studio when our lives are, you know, in our home, um, and especially both of us f uh, love uh, Fluxus work, Art Provera, uh, work of the 60s performance artists, people who wanted to make work um, uh, uh, out of everyday occurrences and everyday practices. And we had always, you know, even before we start collaborating, but uh, we had always Kind of worked with our everyday experiences and our you know everyday objects and um so we were continuing to do that too um so then when we had this like this kind of, we we're like well if we're working with our everyday and making work about our everyday lives shouldn't they include the kids because <laughs> they're such a huge part of our lives especially you know them being so young and um uh, so then we started um Thinking about ways to to include them in our you know our process and and um, it's definitely grown and and evolved and uh, you know they're they're now uh, Emmett's turning fourteen and Madeline is seventeen and so um, there there's less involvement um, from them now <laughs> um, uh, but um, but it's been um, uh, for us, it's been a, a great way to kind of speak about family and speak about home and, you know, what that's that's meant to us as, you know, a, a family, you know, and, and we, we kind of liked turning a, a coin on the idea of Fluxus work and calling it suburban because, you know, we, we live in this like very kind of generic um, uh, Texas has lots of uh, ranch houses and so it's this 1960s ranch house and um, uh, it's just kind of a generic looking house and so um, we kind of liked that idea of being suburban flexus because um, you know it's like working in this you know very normal looking house and and doing you know not normal things <laughs> And, and, and as Mary said, you know, that when that shift happened, when we started saying this is we're, uh, uh, we that the studio was going to be our home, 
Um, it really wasn't, we didn't wake up one day, you know, many artists work with their children specifically, you know, I want to address uh, youth or adolescents or, um, uh, uh, you know, children per se, but I think it was, uh, the, the children just happened to be in the house. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh no, they're there too. They're part of our landscape. They're part, that's perfect. <laughs> they're, they're part of our landscape because our practice also, right behind us is the Mandala series, which was a series of photographs about um, consumerism and consumption. And we started making mandala, mandalas in our house from all of the plastic and um, uh, throw away, you know, one use items that we started to notice mm -hmm. creeped into our house. So, you know, the home becomes this really wonderful uh, uh, petri dish or something. It has the kids, it has consumerism, it has politics, it has neighbors. Um, you know, every time we think that we don't have a subject to, to address, uh, we just have to kind of sit still for a moment and all of a sudden, you know, it, 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 it comes to us in, uh, into the house and that's what we like a lot. That's wonderful. Um, so I'm curious now as being artists who work with your home and out of your home, what does a typical day look like for you? What, what's your schedule like in terms of putting all this together? If there is such a thing as a typical day and a typical schedule. Um, oh. Tell the story now. <laughs> well, let me just first say, I mean, like right now, nothing's typical, right? So like schedules are all wonky right now. Um, so immediately right now, yeah, it's weird. And uh, we're, we're still, we made like a schedule board and we're still, <laughs> to find a way to make things work um, but it's all gotten you know just out the window um, so um, so right now things are not so typical well I, we were just uh, <laughs> we were talking this morning about a story and I have to bring it back up when we first started collaborating together before we had moved to Houston um, there was this one time I think we were about to go to bed we were brushing our teeth we were um, uh, you know, the, the day was winding down and I, I looked at Mary and I said, Mary, and I, you know, very seriously, I put the toothbrush down and I said, I'm really concerned. I feel like we're growing apart uh, in, in uh, generally in our relationship and everything. And she just stops and starts laughing and says, growing apart, uh, we have kids together. Uh, we were teaching together at that time. So we work together, our art practices together. Uh, you know, we spend, we have a relationship together. We don't need more time together. We, we need some time. I need a break. We need a break. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, a typical day is, you know, like kind of crazy that um, we spend a lot of time. It's, it sometimes can be too much, right? That the, the tripods and the lighting kit are always inside of the den or, our, or in our breakfast nook area. Um, we, they, we did a piece called Hole where we tunneled through, we used, um, what is this, hammers and sawzaws. Sawzaws, circular sawzaws, circular saws, and we, <laughs> us and the two children tunneled through all the walls and all the doors in the house to try to escape um, but we never escaped. We just kind of like a habit trail just kept going through all the... It was an exercise in futility. <laughs> and absolutely. And for, for months, once we kind of blinked and realized, oh my goodness, we just ruined every door, every sheetrocked wall, uh, exposed um, wires were coming out. Uh, how old were they? Maybe seven and five or... Young kids, young, young kids. And we lived with that for many months, uh, not knowing what to do with it uh, until we, we eventually patched it all up. But there is a kind of weird, <laughs> we get excited. Um, the whole house, everything that's normal in the house stops. We go into making mode, it gets transformed. And then we are like, oh my goodness, we have to reset. What, what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what just happened? Uh, that yeah. is pretty incredible. Is there anything in your home that is off limits for 
for that? Or has there ever been something that you've done and then after you destroyed something or put a hole in something, you're like, oh no, I, I regret this. What have I done? No. Well, that all the time. <laughs> I was just trying to think if there's any room that we haven't used. I think the kitchen and the bathrooms are the only rooms that we've not utilized. <laughs> um, but we did a piece um, that where we made a, um, a yeah, well, bouncy house. We had a custom made bounce house made and we had it uh, made with projection fabric and the whole thing was white and it was shaped like a really like simple house. Um, and then we projected video on all four sides of it. And the video um, we shot by taking a trampoline and putting it in each room. <laughs> and we've got, you jumped on the trampoline inside the house. <laughs> um, so, so it's this beautiful piece of, a, <laughs> it, we were bouncing on the outside of this house, the projections were on this house. And then when people went into it in the exhibition, they would go inside of the house, they would see they would be jumping with, with us, us inside because of they house. saw on the walls <laughs> us jumping with them. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah, but it was, you know, like that was a a, a piece where um, we really used every room except for the bathrooms and kitchen. But um, uh, yeah, no, I don't think and, there's anything that's really been off limits. <laughs> and you're forgetting at the end of it, our son Emmett, um, the last room in the series that we uh, uh, we did we put the trampoline in his bedroom. It's a huge 10 foot, 15 foot trampoline. And so it, you couldn't walk in. It was uh, wall to wall and the door wouldn't even shut then because the door was uh, uh, Jimmy uh, open from the trampoline. He spreads all of his blankets out and for what, uh, four weeks, five weeks? Uh, he slept the only, <laughs> he wouldn't let us move it out of the, uh, out of the house because he goes, oh, I want this trampoline bed uh, um, in it. Yeah. I think after having gone through so much destruction of the house, we reached a certain point though, where we were like, okay, we're kind of tired of sheetrocking. Um, we're kind of tired of, you know, cutting up furniture, <laughs> um, you know, uh, maybe we should not do that. And actually that's kind of where the mandala series came from too was like we need some healing and now it's after doing all this destruction um so um yeah so we haven't done um as much uh destruction of our house <laughs> of late how have your children handled all of these changes have they been uh kind of open to it all or have they ever been like mom and dad you guys are, are nuts can we, can we not do this anymore <laughs> Yeah, they liked the trampoline, um, but um, uh, you know uh, they have lots of complaints about other projects, and you know, um, lots of um, uh, you know stories of of things that they didn't like that we we did. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, uh, there was a funny time when we had a show, and uh, we had. We, it was a piece we this was a while ago that, that we we cut up our couch with a chainsaw <laughs> and um and we had a we were showing the video of it so we took the couch and put that in the gallery and we were showing the video um of us doing this and madeline was young then and she came home with a friend and her friend was like what happened to your house there's no tv there's no couch and and she goes she goes oh it's at mom's and dad's work and um and we always thought that was funny that, you know, they have kind of a different, um, different way of growing up, but um, uh, as they get older, they're, they're less interested in, in doing it and less interested in, in having their, um, uh, their stuff be <laughs> absorbed into well, projects. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a good story and, and related to the Everson so much, which is um, our piece, Higher Ground, uh, where, which is in the Everson Museum's collection and which is so exciting. Uh, it is a piece about how we as a family of four uh, take everything in the home that's not kind of uh, nailed down or some things actually were nailed down, the doors. We take everything out of the house, we bring it into the backyard and we construct this three-story spaceship which we try or pretend to launch out into space, but it really doesn't work and we come back inside. And we were talking just a couple- More futility. More futility. <laughs> well, that's sort of what our work is about. We were talking um, 
I think it was an art opening the other day and our daughter Madeline Not was, the other day. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> you know, before, ago. several months ago, before <laughs> the other day in, in Corona time, I guess. Uh, well, Madeline was talking with somebody and they asked that very question. I says, you know, what do you remember? What do you like about living with kind of crazy parents? And they brought up higher ground. And here, I think, wouldn't we agree, Mary and I agree, like, this is the funniest thing we've made. A, a three-story spaceship in the backyard. It's silver. It's uh, made out of um, pots and pans and doors and couches. And Madon goes, um, uh, I didn't have a door. They took the door off my hinges of my bedroom, and they took it outside. <laughs> and for, you know, six months, I didn't have a door on my, on my bedroom because it was part of a spaceship. And that was her memory. She's like, oh, man, you know, I went in my door back. Uh, so I think, yeah, the answer to your question is I think we have very funny very different um, recollections and memories of, uh, but that's a good thing. I think that's a typical, good thing. Typical family dynamic. <laughs> well, or typical art, <laughs> typical art making of like yeah. how we, we, how the viewer thinks of the piece, how we thought of the piece, how the, the, these kind of participants are, uh, thought of it. That's wonderful. All right, now I've got one final burning question for you that I think a lot of our, our younger viewers will appreciate. And I know when I was graduating college years ago and I was pursuing a career in the arts, I was so frustrated by the fact that I did not have a studio space. You know, I was living at home with my parents. I was you know, basically confined to my bedroom and that was it. And I wanted to work large. I wanted to do all these things. And I felt kind of suffocated by my space. And I think a lot of young people who maybe don't have the means to acquire a different space outside of their home or even a larger space within their home. I think a lot of young artists go through that. So you two seem like the perfect people to ask this to. What do you do when you are uh, maybe limited by your space? Or I guess you've chosen this, but how do you make the most out of a home studio for anybody who is struggling with that situation right now? Yeah, I mean, when we lived in New York, um, we worked out of our home because we couldn't afford a studio space. Um, so, you know, that's, that's definitely a reality for lots of people. And um, I think that goes back to our use of everyday materials and, and everyday space. And, you know, you can, um, you can, if you, you know, can always work small <laughs> and, you know, create small spaces and make them look bigger. Um, and um, I, I feel like, um, you know, the old, um, you know, commonly used phrase of um, everyone's an artist, everything can be art. Um, you can you can find a way of making work um, in any space. You don't need, uh, I mean, it's nice to have it. You don't need a 5,000 square foot loft to make art. You know, what you need is um, something inside that wants to produce something. Um, that can be small drawings, that could be photographs, it can be, you know, diorama, miniature dioramas. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think that, um, I always feel that space and materials and equipment should never define what you're making. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think we, we I think artists, uh, um, art, we, every artist, we, enjoy certain ways of making and we we'll enjoy certain tools and certain subject matters um, and especially if we've gone you know to school and we've had uh, if I'm an undergraduate or graduate uh, you have access to almost everything and you're like this is this is great and then the key to, I think to your question is we overlook what's special about what's right next to us that's the key to, to fluxus that I forget that that cheese grater uh, placed on my kitchen table and I photograph it becomes this beautiful kind of industrial Russian constructivism, you know, photograph. And uh, it can really become uh, very, very uh, special. But I've overlooked it. I, I, I just see it as the cheese grater, not as something special. And it happens a lot. Um, you know, I, I teach. And um, sometimes I teach a photography course and, you know, of course, if it's an introductory course, uh, I say, okay, one of their assignments is we'll do landscapes. And everybody in Houston goes, 
uh, you know, there's no good landscapes. Um, where's the beautiful Adirondack, um, uh, Adirondack, the, the Appalachian trails, you know, uh, you know, up, up beautiful upstate New York. Where's my apple orchards? Where's my, um, the Great Lakes or the Grand Teton Mountains. I have to get on a plane and go because that's in my head uh, what's beautiful. And then what I usually do is, um, uh, then I flip and I say, well, how about you do a landscape on your table, in your, in your kitchen? How would a landscape look there? And they're like, what, what's going on? Because I think they've overlooked it. I think they've overlooked all these special materials and special things that, um, can be transformed. We so are it's our a good most, question. Yeah, no, and our most recent project um, uh, was 147 devices for integrated principles, and um, they're all small, little like sculpture, ready-made sculptures where we were taking these, you know, objects, putting two objects together, and um, making them into little sculptures, and then photographing those, um, you know, and the prints are not, you know, they range between. 12 inch by 12 inch to 20 inch by 20 inch. They weren't big um, and the sculptures were all small. Um, so, um, you know, even though we've done these large scale things with, you know, in our backyard stuff, we've also done, you know, this, this project, which was a big project, had lots of little components to it. Um, so you can still build a bigger project within using small spaces and using small objects. It's, um, just on kind of how it connects to your idea and, and everything. That's good. Fun. I think fun too. I mean, one of the ways to look at your environment differently, to see the things that you've overlooked is, and that's what we try to do is, you know, whimsy is uh, that kind of, that, that, um, um, not innocent or childlike, but trying to see things uh, differently to inspire you. And I just thought of, you know, our son Emmett did something that every kid has done in their lives. When he was very young, he had a piece of bologna and we were having lunch and he folded it and um, bit it in two twice and made little eye holes. And then he made himself a mask. And he's like, look, and he's holding the bologna up to his, his face, you know? And it was such a, I, I remember it as a, such a wonderful story because I was like, oh my goodness, I wish I as an artist had that kind of, laser um it was just so immediate it was so immediate You're like baloney uh, <laughs> art piece it was just like okay and and that's so maybe again that's the trick or the answer to your your question of like how do you make your small space now in this very difficult time that we all are um it's probably not as hard as we think it is um it's probably very easy in the sense if we can just take a breath and just start having fun and experimenting. That's wonderful. I think you're right. I think, you know, being able to shift that perspective is incredibly important as artists and non-artists alike. And I really appreciate you sharing your advice with us today. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. This was a wonderful interview. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really appreciate you making time for, for us at the E-Person today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful day. Yes, thank you.